Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In this podcast, we'll analyze how solar energy can help the EU move towards climate neutrality while reducing its dependency on energy imports by replacing them with domestic production. Want to know more? Stay with us. Solar energy is cheap, clean, and it's increasingly winning consumers and politicians over. And it's not difficult to see why. It can be used for electricity and heating, not only protecting consumers against soaring energy prices, but also allowing them to produce their own energy, for instance, by means of rooftop solar panels. It also creates hundreds of thousands of jobs as well as new businesses. But there's always a but. There are challenges. Yes, there are. To begin with, supply is not stable, as it is highly dependent on the weather and the geography. There is also competition for land use with other sectors, such as agriculture. Technological challenges linked to energy storage and conversion, a lack of skilled workers, and with China dominating global production, there is also a risk to create new dependencies. So, what is the EU doing to help the sector overcome these challenges and promote its development? Stay with us. Boosting renewable energy is an important part of the European Green Deal and the more ambitious climate goals enshrined in the European climate law. But Russia's invasion of Ukraine, combined with spiralling energy prices and concerns regarding security of supply, have accelerated Europe's energy transition. The Repower EU plan, aimed at phasing out the EU's dependence on Russian fossil fuels and further boosting the rollout of renewables, wants to unlock the full potential of solar energy in the EU. Dieter Juul Jorgensen is Director General for Energy at the European Commission. Solar energy will be a cornerstone in our effort, as you would have seen in the EU solar energy strategy. We aim to provide 320 gigawatt of solar photovoltaic by 2025. That's more than a doubling compared to 2020. And we would like to reach 600 gigawatt by 2030. To achieve this, the EU wants member states to ensure that all new buildings have solar panels on the roofs, within a specific time frame, of course. It also plans to streamline permitting procedures for renewable energy projects, give workers the skills they need to work in the solar sector, and boost the EU's capacity to manufacture photovoltaic panels, so we are not dependent on China. A move fully supported by the European Parliament. We spoke to German MEP Markus Pieper. To break away from energy dependencies, we need to accelerate the expansion of all kinds of renewable energy sources. And in this context, the Commission's solar energy strategy is a welcome and positive piece of a very complex puzzle. It will help us master the challenge of building a modern, secure, resilient, innovative European energy system and achieve climate neutrality by 2050. But all this will cost money, so who will foot the bill? Well, the Commission admits that most of it will have to be private, but the Recovery and Resilience Facility offers funding for the rollout of renewables and other funds could also be used in addition. Here's Agnieszka Viduto from the European Parliamentary Research Service. The Solar Energy Strategy mentions some additional funding sources, for example, cohesion policy funds, the InvestEU programme, the Innovation Fund, Modernization Fund, Horizon Europe, the LIFE programme and the Connecting Europe facility. These can be used to support renewable energy projects such as local infrastructure development, research and innovation, modernising energy systems and cross-border cooperation. Truth is, investments are already flowing in Europe and the solar sector is growing. While wind and water provided most of the renewable electricity, solar was the fastest growing energy source in the last decade, increasing from 0.8% in 2010 to 5.3% in 2020. Renewables still represent just 22% of the energy we consume in Europe. But considering that in 2004 it was less than 10%, We're definitely making progress. And just a few weeks ago, the European Parliament voted for the share of renewable energy in the bloc's energy mix to be raised to 45% by 2030. Something that Solar Power Europe, an organisation representing the solar sector in Europe, has been long campaigning for. Let's hear their CEO, Wahlberger Hermitsberger. Solar Power Europe have been campaigning for this 45% uh, target in our Yes to 45% Dress campaign. So we now have 
all the ingredients to take solar to the next level and fully support Europe's energy security and climate goals. What's clear is that renewable energy is key to reduce the EU's energy import dependency and help our continent move towards climate neutrality, as outlined in the European Green Deal. And according to a 2022 study by the International Energy Agency, solar has a strong role to play in this transition. But the security of manufacturing supply deserves particular attention, as putting the world on a path to reaching net zero emissions will require solar PV to expand globally on a massive scale and quickly. Some future solutions to the challenges facing the EU solar energy sector could include boosting EU domestic production – and exploring new technologies such as agri-solar, which refers to the dual use of land for both agriculture and solar power generation, solar installations floating on water, and even capturing solar energy from outer space. And steps are being taken. With the solar energy strategy announced under Repower EU, coupled with other legislative measures on renewable energies, the EU is already working to make solar energy one of the cornerstones of its future energy system. Want to know more? Check out Agnieszka Viduto's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.